so we took a look at the, the Valiant comics that I've been reading for 2016, basically catching up to all my reads. And um, what I've done is uh, sort of separated uh, my reads for 2016, the reviews that I'm going to give you into three different categories. One was the Valiants that we've already taken a look at. Um, another one is the, the image a lot, the image comics that I'm lead, reading, and that's you know a fair chunk as well. So I've been checking out a lot of image books. And um, the third pile is basically, or third grouping is basically everything else. And everything else is basically majority independence. Uh, independence being anyone not Marvel or DC, but there is one Marvel book in here and one DC book in here, or one Marvel mini and one DC double shot, okay? Um, so for now, let's go through the independent stuff or everything else is not valiant or image, right? And uh, let's go through these or sort of uh, went and organized these based on uh, the publishers, based on, based on the studios that are producing these things because um, one thing that's happening right now in the industry is uh, there are different comic book publishers hitting different um, different audiences to a certain degree, right? So it's, I'm sort of personally, I'm sort of sampling a little from each one because I like, you know, I, I like a certain type of story in comic books, but I love the comic book medium, the comic book genre in general. So I like to find out what's going on in the industry and what's being published and, um, you know, what what's being conveyed right what's being shared the type of art the type of information uh, that is being put out by different groups of people right so let's go through the these comics um these independents uh, there's a couple of the you know one marvel and one dc as well but let's go through these uh, based on the pub publishing houses okay and the first one i sort of you know the artist names and stuff are on all of these, almost all of these, there's a few that didn't have the artist's name and stuff on them, and it was hard trying to find a publishing house. It was re written really small. I do have my glasses here, but what I ended up doing is uh, looking everything up and um, putting them according to, you know, categorizing them, and I'll supply this information in the description of this video so you'll know exactly uh, which comic books it is that I'm uh, that I'm talking about and what the names of some of the artists are because I'm really horrendous at uh, pronouncing names and that information is definitely going to be flashing on the screen as well if you're interested okay so the first company we're going to take a look at is uh, Black Mask Studios okay so I've been reading I've checked out a few other of their comics as well but uh, because in 2016 they've you know I've been burying everything in boxes so these are the only ones that um, that I hadn't read um, I haven't read all of Black Mass but I've read some a fair bit which has got me to the point where I want to uh, check out almost everything they do and I do check out almost everything they do okay the first uh, the first series that's I've really got why my opening is uh, the first series that I really got into and I've I showed the cover of this um, this is number two and uh, the comic is called black okay from black max studios and I showed the cover of this in the last video when we we're looking at the valiant books and I thought this was insane I didn't know this cover was coming out this was number two you know I picked it up from one and there's three issues out right now one, two, three. I'll show you the covers because the covers are brilliant. I uh, love the covers of this. And the premise is basically uh, in the world, it's only uh, blacks that are being, uh, that are acquiring superpowers. Okay. Um, and it's beautifully done. And it's a black and white comic. Okay. Look at this one. Fantastic. Uh, this is this is going to be one of the comic books I'm going to look forward to the most coming out hopefully every month hopefully every month okay and this comic is done by uh, yes yeah, written like some of the stuff is written in 
dark red, the artist, the produce, um, the people who created this, it was really hard to read that. So basically, the writer for this is Kwanza, Kwanza Osaji Fo. And uh, a co creator and designer it is Tim Smith 3. Okay. Um, and art, the artist is Jamal Eagle. Okay. And the covers uh, are done by uh, K. Kari Randolph. Kari Randolph. <laughs> Testing my abilities to pronounce names. Uh, Kari Randolph. And I believe, uh, is it this one? Oh, I'm not going to. I'm not 100% sure because I believe this person who's done the covers for this has done some covers for Marvel as well. Uh, or no, sorry, for DC as well. But I, I'm not 100% sure if I got the right people. So I won't mention which covers might have been done as well. I think it was, actually I'll mention, I think it was Robin. Uh, one of the ones, it's the same style where, uh, where the Robins, uh, they were jumping in the air and there's a whole bunch of robins uh, jumping that was a beautiful cover i bought uh, i bought that as well even though i wasn't reading robin i loved that cover um so that's one that i'm reading and as far as uh, you know if we stick with the rating system uh, if i was giving these these things ratings i wouldn't rate this a 9.5 9 out of 10. Um, and most likely it'll come up to 10 out of 10 if they continue this it's only three issues deep Another one that I read, uh, that I started picking up, which, uh, it was Skeptic, okay? And Skeptic is put out by, the the writer is uh, Tini Howard, and the artist is uh, um, Davi, Daviki Ni, uh, Niogi, Daviki Niogi, okay? And this came out in October, and Black came out in September 2016, and this thing started in October 2016. Uh, the premise is okay. This is uh, cover of issue three. Okay. This is cover of issue two. And cover of issue number three. Or number one, sorry. Um, interesting premise. I read it. Um, I had high hopes for it. Um, but I'm, I'm going to drop it. Um, I'm, I haven't told uh, the comic book. Uh, uh, when I end up dropping... Uh, titles I usually don't tell them until I pick up my um, so this is the way I sort of filter out uh, the comics um, on a yearly basis whenever I go through my comics and I figure out what I want to keep and whenever I get my pull list when I see the issue that's out I tell them that I'm you know stop putting that in my thing uh, in my box I'm dropping it okay uh, so I don't go go on and say I'm dropping all of these I read one more issue just to make sure just to make sure okay uh, but I will be dropping skeptic and I, I would have you know I'm sort of a harsh writer sometimes and I'm sorry if I'm not showing the love but I would only rate this as a 5.56 if we're rating it out of 10 um, I read the first issue of forevers um, the forevers uh, is Kurt uh, Pyers and Eric Pfeiffer and it came out in September 2016 um, I think it's an issue number two has already come out. I didn't put on put this on my pull list. It was interesting. It was dark. It was heavy. Uh, I might decide to read it. I'm gonna maybe you know if I keep it in mind, pick up issue number two and have a read through it and see if I'm into going that heavy in my reads right now. I'm just not in a mood, but I'll keep. I'm gonna be definitely keeping this in mind if I want something dark. Uh, and it's definitely more mature related. Blast, Black Mask comics are more mature related. That's a given most. Uh, not all, but a lot of independents uh, because they don't have a huge corporation behind them that's filtering things, right? Like Marvel is owned by Disney, so it's a Disney filter to a large degree going through it, right? I doubt it if we'll, well, we might, but anyway. Uh, so the smaller the publishers, the less filters, in general, uh, more adult oriented, more, more heavy, and this is heavy okay uh, and as far as uh, this type of read is concerned i would give this uh, 8.5 so far out of 10 with one issue read hopefully um, i'll remember to pick up issue number two okay now those are the reads that i've been doing for black max studios for there's another a comic book publisher that i'm really excited about i've been trying to check out as much as i can uh, and that's scout comics and um 
I haven't got too deep into them. I've read a fair bit about them. I've read, seen some previews and I'm going to start checking them out more and more. But one comic I checked out was Sabretooth Dan. And this is issue number one. And this was, you know, I saw this while I was browsing the racks. I grabbed it. Uh, I flipped through it. It looked interesting. It looked, uh, looked like a straight out fun comic, right? It looks like a straight out fun comic. Uh, with a deep method message in it. That's what it looked like to me when I flipped through it. And um, after reading it, I looked it up, and it's from uh, Scout Comics, right? And the creator for this, the artist and the writer for this, is C.R. Mountain. And I was, after reading one issue, I really wanted to dig down in this. I was, okay, this is going in my pull list. And I, you know, I told my comic shop owner to put this on my pull list, and they couldn't find it, right? So I had to look online and stuff like this. And I found out there's three issues out of the, uh, on this. Okay, it was extremely hard to find for um, where I have my pull list for the comic shop owners. And I told them, you know, if they see it coming across, please order it for me, <laughs> right? Uh, so I'm most likely gonna look online to get number two and number three, and I'll try to get a couple of more sets of this as well, because I think it would be an amazing gift to someone. Um, this isn't adult oriented. Um, it's it's along the lines of uh, I read some descriptions. Some people said the, the reviews were Calvin and Hobbes mixed with something else. Uh, for me, it was it had a bone feel to it with Jeff Smith. It did have a Calvin and Hobbes feel to it. I really like this comic. Uh, ten out of ten, hundred uh, percent. Hopefully, they come back with this. Really, um, I'm. You know, after I do this review in the next couple of days, two or three days, well, I put this on my watch list, but I'm definitely going to be uh, tracking this thing down, okay? And that's uh, Scout Comics that I read, 10 out of 10, and uh, we don't know, I, don't, I haven't found out what the real name of the artist is, but it's a pseudo name of C.R. Mountain, and it came out, uh, it started in April 2016. Another comic that I had to get my comic shop owner to order is from OSSM Comics, and it's uh, Terminarch. Okay. I read the description for this, and it intrigued me because I like sci-fi, and this is a sci-fi book, and uh, very well done as far as story uh, premise goes, as far as the storyline goes, as far as the delivery goes. The artwork was okay, it was good, it wasn't phenomenal. Like Saber Tooth Dan, the artwork was phenomenal, I loved it. It was one creator putting his heart and soul into it. Um, the same with this, this is, um, the story is Jordan Hart, and the art is by Terry Huddleston, Hudder, Huddleston, yeah, Terry Huddleston. It came out in August 2016, it's just a one shot, it's sort of like a prestige format, it's a little bit thicker. Um, and I believe it was for this one where I read the back. Um, the creator sort of left a little message and they said, you know, they only intended this thing to be a one shot, but they do have other stories that they could expand on this. So if people are interested, you know, to send them a message uh, to let them know that they're interested for them to continue this. Um, I haven't sent them a message yet. Maybe help when I put up this video, I'll link it up to the, to the timeline. Uh, I'm interested. Um, if you continue the story, um, I will definitely be buying. Okay. As far as a sci-fi lover goes, uh, it was great sci-fi, very good sci-fi. Um, another publishing publishing house that I'm checking out is uh, Titan Comics. Okay, I'm not checking out too much from them. Uh, I'm checking out some, uh, but right now what I was reading is uh, oh yeah, there's issue. Um, I'm reading why. Well, no, Tank Girl number four. Tank, I'm reading Tank Girl Gold. Okay, so four issue miniseries. I don't think four hasn't crossed my way yet. Um, so I don't know if it's already out or not. I haven't gone to the comic book store this week. Uh, but I've read, uh, you know, issue number one, issue number two, issue number three. Um, loved, loved. Loved issue number three. If issue number three was a standalone, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Okay. The artist for this is, um, or the writer is Alan C. Martin and is the creator of Tank Girl. Tank Girl came out in, uh, 
mid 1980s I believe and there was a movie made of Tank Girl if you haven't seen it it's a fun movie it's a very comic book movie um, the live action uh, parts were okay it was, it was fun I hadn't read you know I don't know too much about Tank Girl um, but I read a little bit in the past and I really wanted to check this one out um, but the movie the the transition they did a they did cuts with the movie where they were doing showing sort of moving comic book panels and stuff like this the edits in that movie are worth the watch fantastically done fantastically done if you're a comic book lover um, even if you know tank girl i don't know if tank girl movie was really true to the original tank girl because uh, i haven't read the original stuff i read some stuff afterwards um, but you should check out the cut scenes maybe on youtube there's you know cut scenes you know transition from the live action to the next live action shots uh, maybe someone's put that together on youtube where you can check that it was beautifully done beautifully done um, as far as the three issues of this go i'd give us this a nine out of ten uh, with issue number three being a ten out of ten i loved it i loved issue number three it was fantastic um and i'm sort of uh, looking forward to issue number four definitely looking forward to issue number four um, and this came out in september 2016 there is one here i'll show you the dc uh, the dc read i did it wasn't a recent read i picked this up um, online um, i didn't know this had to come out but it's basically lobo batman deadly serious by uh, sam keith this is issue number one this is issue number two and it's two issue prestige format um lobo sam keith batman right it was a no-brainer for me uh, as soon as i found out it was it had to come out i sort of put it on my watch list so i was tracking and i was able to you know get these at you know a reasonable price for five bucks right both of them together and i read it it was okay i love the sam keith art it, the story sort of jumped around a little bit lobo uh could have broken batman in half in like a second uh but you know sam keith played around with it right um, and I love the art. I love Sam Keith's art. Um, for me, being a Sam Keith fan, like, love it when he puts everything into it, um, I would give this a 9.5 out of 10 because of Sam Keith's art. As far as complete package of story goes, I'd give it an 8, all right? 7.5, 8 out of 10. Uh, for me, it was worth it. It was worth the read. Okay. Uh, and that was DC. There's one uh, publisher that I've checked out a lot of stuff from, especially the stuff they did uh, when they were doing the old uh, Golden Age books that Valiant picked up, you know, when they put out Solar, Turok, and uh, Magnus, uh, and Dr. Mirage, like, not Dr. Mirage, uh, what was the other doctor's name anyway? One of the Golden Key characters, and I checked out some of the issues that they did uh, like two or three years ago with uh, some of the Golden stuff, Golden Age stuff. Um, and I've checked out some of their work in the past for sure, which is from Dynamite. And what I ended up checking is something that I usually, you know, it's not in my full repertoire all the time, uh, but it was Betty Boop. Okay. Uh, I saw it. Um, the artist, the writer for this is Roger Len, Len, Lendridge. And the artist is Giselle Lagas, Leg Legacci. Okay. Um, beautiful artwork really beautiful artwork like tank girl tank girl gold, gold the artwork in all three issues was is absolutely brilliant i loved loved the artwork the artwork as far as tank girl concerned 10 out of 10 on all of it right a very unique very detailed and i believe the artist uh, Wow, I'm going by memory, so I'll leave that alone. But uh, the artwork for Tank Girl Gold, I'm going to check out more of the artwork that uh, that artist is putting out. I haven't found too much. I don't think he's done too much work. I, I looked online and I couldn't find too much. So he, he's done a lot of work on Tank Girl. I hope he expands into other other types of comics as well. But if he's going to stick with Tank Girl, I'm going to read a lot more Tank Girl. Okay. And Betty Boop, the artist for this is fantastic. Okay. Um, Giselle Legrasse. That was a cover for issue number one. 
and the, it was a cover that originally got me interested in picking this up. It's a four issue miniseries, I believe, four or six issue miniseries. Okay, number two, fun, fun cover, and number three. I've read some pages of Betty Boop in the past, never read long stories. And each one of these sort of stand alone, they come together. Um, it's a fun read, the artwork is fantastic. The artwork I would give nine and a half out of 10. Um, as far as story-wise goes, it's a good story actually. It's picking up by, by the end of number three, I'm like, very cool, like excited to read number four. Um, another publishing house that's been around forever, right? One of the greatest publishing houses. Uh, Dark Horse Comics. I never read a lot of Dark Horse Comics. A ton of Dark Horse Comics. Um, and definitely more mature. Almost all their comics, heart and soul, put into it, right? Um, but I started reading, I read the first two issues of Black Hammer. Fantastic. Right? Jeff Lemire, uh, Dean Ormston, Dave Stewart. And this came out uh, in July. Number one came out in July 2016. 10 out of 10. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've picked up three and four. I think it's six deep. Um, I don't think I've added it to my pull list because I hadn't read one and two. Uh, but I'm reading a lot of Jeff Lemire through Valiant. So, you know, I didn't know if I was going to want to be invested in another <laughs> Lemire book. But yeah, I'm going to be invested in this, right? And there's another one I'm reading uh, from Lemire as well. I forgot to bring it down. Uh, it's up top, which is uh, uh, AD, uh, After Death, right? After Death is fantastic as well, so I'll put that up here as well. Uh, another uh, Lemire book. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's Jeff Lemire, but it's Image Comics. That's why I put it with uh, the Image Comics video that we're going to do, okay? Uh, I think it's Jim, Jeff Lemire anyway. So anyway, back to Black Hammer. Fantastic, fantastic read, okay? The first two issues were really good. Love the characters. The artwork is amazing. Uh, Dean Ormston. Dean Ormston. I don't remember reading anything or seeing any comics that he's put out. Uh, so Black Hammer is going to be, if it's not on my pull list, it's definitely going to be added to my pull list. Another one I'm reading from uh, Dark Horse. And I started picking this up. Um, because of uh, Hailbilly, which we're gonna take a look at later, but basically because of Eric Powell, which is Chimichanga, the sorrow of the world's worst face. Okay, and this is number one, cover number one, cover of number two, cover of number three. Okay. And uh, this came out in October, 2016. And I'm picking this series up. I'm not sure if it's a continuing series or if it's a, it's a limited series. Um, beautiful storytelling. This is sort of all ages. Uh, I would consider it all ages. It's got some stuff that sort of could be scary, I guess, for really young kids. Um, but a very good read, <laughs> right? So I'm three issues in. I don't know if it's a continuing series. Uh, the artwork is written by Eric... Uh, Eric Powell and the artwork is Stephanie Bosima. Okay, and I looked at the name Bosima, Stephanie Bosima. Here's the name Eric Powell and Stephanie Bosima, right? Or Bochima. And I looked at that and I went, No, it can't be right. And I looked online, and Stephanie Bosima is the granddaughter of uh, John Bosima. Um, and I've mentioned John Bosima before because he had a lot of work on Conan the Barbarian. Uh, or Savage Sword of Conan, sorry, Savage Sword of Conan. And uh, as soon as I found that out, I'm like, yes, right? I love it when there's uh, dynasties in comic books where you see the progression of art, uh, how one family member uh, draws or writes relative to another. Okay, now. I started reading Eric Powell because of Hillbilly, and we'll talk about that, but just on the chimichanga uh, front, um, this thing crossed my path, which is chimichanga. This is the first appearance of chimichanga. It came out in uh, June, two th uh, where is it? Uh, da, 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 did I even write this down? Oh yeah, uh, December 2009, right? 
and this is the first print of chimichanga okay and i didn't buy this initially when it came out i just saw this in the uh, distributors booklet that they give and i usually get that every month and i flip through it and uh, you know the preview stuff that diamond distributors has they put out and you know that's the book that uh, comic book stores order from so i usually pick up a copy of that with uh, in my comic book store if you have a box with them you get a copy of that for free so i pick it up and i you know spend this good bathroom reading you flip through it and see what you want and this thing crossed my path and i bought three copies of this i had to right it's the first print of chimichanga the first appearance of chimichanga it was signed and there's a sketch by eric powell right it's signed the sketch and i bought these uh you know it's 14 dollars canadian but i bought them for 10 dollars. they were listed for 10 dollars us and i i'm not usually someone who chases uh, signatures and uh sketches right uh, i've had some experience with that and uh, I want the art and the stories to make me fall in love with comics. Uh, finding more information sometimes is fantastic about artists, sometimes it's not. You know, and I've and I've seeked out some of the stuff, and I've found some information about some artists, such as John Byron, that you know people don't like, and I'm like, oh wow, I read some stuff about him. And then I've read some stuff about Jim Shooter that people don't like, and. As you know, I have follow Valiant. I love Jim Shooter. I don't, I don't care about the politics behind the publishing houses or the interactions, right? So that's one thing that happens if you f start following signature and sketches and stuff. You get exposed to that. Um, so I stopped doing it, but this one I had to do, right? It was uh, a no-brainer for me. It was just there. You just order. It comes in, right? And it comes in from the publishing house of eric powell which is albatross funny books right so this wasn't through um dark horse it was through eric powell's publishing house i believe it's eric powell's publishing house and it's called albatross funny books okay so and i believe this is this was yeah that's true this was called i think the original name for them was exploding albatross called funny books right and i think they've narrowed it down to albatross funny books okay uh, i haven't read this one yet I will, I will definitely. Uh, I might because I think this was a three issue mini series that first came out, and I don't have issue two and three, and I want to read it in one shot, right? So I might pick up the trade paperback or you know, hunt down issue number two and three. And right now, I'm checking out everything Eric Powell, and I'm getting Spook House, and it's coming from Albatross Comics, and this is sort of children's horror thriller comic books i would consider this to be sort of all ages to a certain degree um it's anthology sort of short stories chimichanga is one continuous story i don't know what chimichanga the, the first appearance of is continuous or not but chimichanga from dark horses was a continuous story it was really good uh this one was sort of standalones um, i believe i got them i picked up issue number two because i put this on my pull list but i haven't read issue number two yet uh fun read i'm not sure if i'm gonna continue reading it um but I'm gonna pull it. I'm gonna pull everything Eric Powell. Okay. Um, and Chimichanga, the, the, I don't know if I told you the rating, as far as the type of story it goes, uh, what it's geared towards, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Fantastic if uh, youngins wanted to expose to like amazing artwork and a kid's sort of story that they could handle a little bit of frightening stuff. Um, Spook House, I would give about seven and a half, eight out of 10 and hillbilly hillbilly was my first exposure to eric powell i hadn't read eric powell before and i'd heard about goon a lot and didn't check it out uh, because he did goon i think he sort of made his mark with goon i haven't looked too deep into his stuff at some point i plan on collecting everything that he's done uh, i'd heard about goon but i never read it um, but i picked up hillbilly and i read it and i'm like yeah let's check out everything he puts out okay here's issue number one fan i read this i was like wow right 10 out of 10 he does the um what do you call it the 
the art, the, you know, the story, the art, everything. It's basically his own work. It's like Jeff Smith and Bone. Here's cover of issue number two. Each one is sort of standalone so far. And there's a little bit of continuation from one book to another. The only thing you really have to know about the series is uh, he's a witch hunter. Okay. And he has dark black eyes and he's got a, his uh, thingamajig here. Uh, axe is not an axe, it's a hatchet or whatever it is that he's holding, right? Um, witches can't touch it. Okay. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. We'll be reading every month. And if I fall behind, I will be definitely looking forward to doing a binge read on this. Okay. 10 out of 10. Fantastic. And that's from uh, Albatross Funny Books or Albatross. I don't know if the people actually just go Albatross Funny Books. I, just, I think it's pretty, just pretty much Albatross. Now, another publishing house that is created by the publisher himself, the creator of the comic books himself, is Terry Moore, right? And it's Abstract Studios. And I started reading Motor Girl. And everything's done by Terry Moore. And this thing came out in November 2016. And Hillbilly came out in June 2016. So Motor Girl, November 2016, uh, written and drawn by Terry Moore. It's black and white. 10 out of 10. Fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Really, read this. Read this. Okay. Fantastic humor within the first issue same with hillbilly with issue number one you're in love with the characters with issue number one of uh, motor girl you're in love with the characters right fantastic it's three issues deep okay um 10 out of 10 and terry moore he's done uh, rachel rising and uh, strangers in paradise he finished those he basically when he starts a series he continues it and I'm really happy. I didn't start Strangers in Paradise or Rachel Rising at the beginning. I read some of them. I actually bought the, a Rachel Rising omnibus, which is the whole story in one shot. At some point, I'll sit down and read it. I, I have it in my bookcases. I should have put it here so I can show you how thick it is, right? And uh, uh, Strangers in Paradise, they put out a... I saw the advertisements in this, in the back of this. They got uh, two omnibus each one 1,000 pages, right? That's how much work he's put in, he puts into his uh, stories. Uh, so 10 out of 10, okay. Uh, another publishing house that uh, I'm checking out for sure, not everything, uh, but they're on my radar, and I do look at what they're putting out when I look through the catalog, is Oni Press. And I'm reading uh, Wotro. It came out in November 2016. And uh, the creators for this are Ulysses Farinas, Ulysses Farinas, Eric Fritas, Ryan Hill. Okay. And uh, Ulysses is the writer, and Ulysses and Ryan Hill uh, are the artists. For some reason, the cover of this doesn't mention. Uh, or sorry, with the information I copied from, I think it was from their website, maybe. It doesn't mention Eric Ferritas, but, you know, it's on the cover. So I'll put that on there as well. Uh, it's a good read. Um, I've added it to my pull list. I flipped through it. It's rare that I do this, but I flipped through it when I saw it on the racks. Um, and I had read up on the story. It was supposed to be sci-fi and fantasy and post-apocalyptic and I love post-apocalyptic and uh, here's the cover of number two and it's good read um, eight and a half out of ten right very good read uh, the only book that I'm I was pulling on Marvel Gage right the creator of uh, uh, Samurai Jack uh, Gendi Tar Kovoski, <laughs> um, 
And this thing is just a four issue mini series. Uh, Stephanie uh, Des Tafano and Scott Wills, or I believe there might be colors and uh, edit or letters and edit. I'm not absolutely sure, but the artwork and story is by uh, Gendi. And it was a fun read, right? They go by, if you're just looking into reading it, it goes by super quick. Like it's very quick read is the cover number two right and in issue number three i think it was an issue number three or might have been issue number four uh because one thing with uh uh gendy's work uh tar 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 tarkovsky one thing with tarkovsky's work especially with samurai jack and stuff he had episodes in there where there's no dialogue it's just images right uh, beautiful images beautiful images and this is cover of issue number four and in issue I believe it was in issue number four with the main battle going on um, he mentions he says have you have you already read this far slow down take a look at the artwork like he actually says that in the text right reminding us that the images that he the panel layouts and the images the coloring and just the, the style of the art is part of the story so I slowed down. I was going through it really fast. So I slowed down and flipped back a little bit. I just enjoyed the artwork, just the details and just the motion of it, right? Uh, so it was a good comic. Uh, I wish it was longer, really. I wish it was longer. Uh, just for that, uh, it was funny. There was a couple of times where I laughed out loud. Uh, just because it was so short, I would give it, you know, eight and a half out of 10, right? Maybe an eight out of 10, eight out of 10. Now those are all the, I'm gonna grab some tea here. Those are all the, the comic books, the publishers that I'm picking up singles from, okay? There's one other publisher that I'm picking up singles from, which is Aftershock. And I'm picking up a fair bit of Aftershock, but before we get into that, let me show you just some of the trades that I read as well. I read a fair bit, a few other trades as well, but, uh, just want to show you guys these these ones, okay? Um, one thing I mentioned in a previous video, I can't remember which one it was, that I read, uh, you know, a special sort of a three-issue series of uh, dedication from Double Take. It was sort of a zombie post-apocalyptic story. I read three issues and. You know, they put out a trade format which contain, contained more of the issues. I think this is six issues. Okay, so I read this through and I wanted to read more. And I actually went to the comic book store. I was going to buy a whole bunch of them just to continue the reads. Uh, it's it's fun read. It's like I was surprised how fun it was. It was quirky. It was weird. Right? The artwork was weird. Um, cartoonish and the story was weird. The dialogue was weird. But there's a certain depth to it which I really liked. Uh, so I finished, uh, you know, this, and they're going for cheap. So I'm going to look online to see if I can get all the trades in one shot, and you know, have a have a read through this maybe for the summer. It'd be fantastic summer reading on the beach. Really, it would be amazing summer reading on the beach. This thing, okay. And they had some amazing data. That's one thing as well. They had amazing data that they were sharing from future generations. I guess I can't. I don't know who the artist for this is. There, this. Uh, storyboard illustrated by bon Jonathan Ashley. Uh, storyboard illustration, Stan Chu, story, Michael Coast, uh, editor, art. Where's the art? Oh, there's a whole bunch of people here. Uh, Michael Coast, Matthew. So there's a lot of people involved in this. Um, fun read, fun read. Uh, as far as my interest in this is about an eight out of 10. Um, as far as just rating it in general, I'd probably give it like six and a half out of 10. Actually, I would give it seven, 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 seven and a half out of 10, not six and a half. We'll go half a point, one point lower. Another one that trade paperback that really stood out, that's fantastic. It almost brought tears to my eyes, right? It made my eyes water. Uh, Andre the Giant, Closer to Heaven. It's a biography, fantastic. Or a uh, story of his life written by 
it was unauthorized and then the family read it and then they authorized it um, this is the i think the third printing of it that i grabbed it's by lion uh, force comics uh, what a great read what a great read i didn't know a lot of this um, i followed some of wrestling uh, but it brings me back certain memories and I, andre giant is a huge part of that uh, so I really wanted to read this, and it was fantastic. Really highly rec recommended, and it was written by Easton and uh, written and created by Easton and Medri. Medri. So it was written by Brandon Easton, illustrated by Dennis Medri, and edited by Shannon Denton. Okay, here's the first page of it, and this is the type of artwork it had. Great read, great read, 10 out of 10, without a doubt. Another book that I picked up uh, along with this, I haven't read this, is uh, from Dark Horse. I believe this is a Dark Horse. Yeah, this is Dark Horse, uh, Muhammad Ali. Okay, uh, a biography or someone writing about his, his adventures. I flipped through it. I haven't read it yet. Uh, one of the reasons I haven't read it yet, I'm not, the text and the art is so small for this. I wish they did this in a bigger format so it came out a little bit bigger uh, like really small right I'm not sure when I'm gonna read this uh, but just a word to Dark Horse if you're seeing anybody seeing this if you reprint this in a bigger format I'll buy it again okay uh, in other trades uh, that I started reading uh, is uh, you're gonna see it's one of the artists one of the writers that I've talked about a lot especially in Hellblazer and one of the ones that I'm reading right now is American Monster from Aftershock that we're going to talk about uh, but once I start reading American Monster from Aftershock I started uh, reading some of the trades of 100 bullets again because I haven't read all of 100 bullets yet so this is number three <laughs> fantastic if you're reading you know if you haven't read 100 bullets I haven't read all of it just pick up a trade and read it might be a little bit confusing at first and this is number 10 number 10 actually contains a lot of info about uh, agent uh, grime oh god i forgot the name agent grimes i guess is it grimes oh i forget what it is agent 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 graves Pfft, grimes agent graves right it talks a lot about the houses and stuff it gives a lot of background to 100 bullets so you could even pick this up and read this you will be confused okay but it'll give you a nice background to beginning of 100 bullets with issue number one or trade number one if you're into it okay i'm not sure if you want to do that because that's not the way the story was told but uh the trade number 10 was fantastic to read okay. now let's go to aftershock aftershock comics now when they first started publishing and jumped on their first wave of comics they put out and they were fantastic i really liked them uh, let me sort these out a little bit uh, uh, super zero was was i was looking forward to that read every month they haven't put one out for a while uh it, the last one i read i think was issue number six i hope you guys put out super zero again if you're watching this if anybody's watching this aftershock or aftershock comics i don't know if it's over yet um i hope it's not i hope they come back with it and i was reading um, i picked up um uh, super zero insects uh, replica uh, and beck okay black eyed kids super zero i can't pick up anymore they're not putting any out hopefully they will replica they stopped putting out too i was enjoying that as well it was good sci-fi very good sci-fi um i was reading insects but i dropped it insects still being printed uh, i talked to one of the people that worked in a comic book store and they said they were they loved it i think they're still reading it uh, i liked it initially um, but we talked about it and he, he was english he's an english lit uh, he knows people that are English lit professors and stuff that were reading it but the one thing they said was they found it to be too literal I'm not sure 100% sure what that means but it became for me it just became too much <laughs> it, it was it was weird 
uh, it started out really good, uh, but it became too much a little bit. So I dropped Insects. But Replica and Super Zero I really loved. If you haven't read those, I highly recommend them. Um, and they were putting out so much, so I wasn't picking up everything. Um, but I'm picking up randoms. And initially I missed Animosity, but I picked up, this is I think the third print. I do have the second print, and I got the first print of number two. And the rest are first prints. So it's four issues deep, I believe. Animosity number one. Animosity number two. Animosity number three. Animosity number four. Uh, good post-apocalyptic story. Okay. Um, it's basically you find out at the beginning. So you know, I do have spoilers in these reviews, but uh, I'll give you this one. It's basically animals become conscious, right? Um, and it's a good sci-fi story. Great sci-fi story. Great post-apocalyptic story. Uh, there was a lot of buzz about this when it first came out. And after reading the first four issues, I know why. Uh, as far as rating goes, I would give this one uh, 9 out of 10. And the writers for this are Marguerite Bennett. Uh, the artist is Raphael de Latour. Uh, the colorist is Rob uh, Schwager. Letter is Marshall Dillian. Okay. And it came out to start off in August 2016. Uh, Nice read, very nice read. Looking forward to reading it every week or every month. Okay. Another one which I wasn't 100% sure on. I didn't know how to take it. Halfway through this, I was uh, not, a, you know, a quarter of the way through this, I wasn't 100% sure. After reading the first issue, I liked that a lot. After reading issue number, this is number one. And this is number two. After finishing number two, I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't, this isn't in my pull list, but I'm going to tell my, uh, I'm going to add it to my pull list. And the artist for this is, uh, Paul, uh, the writer for this is Paul Jenkins, and the artist is Lila Liz, Li, Li, Liz. Uh, the colorist is uh, Tamara Bonvillian, and the letter is Ryan Hill. Okay. And it started in September 2016. It's a superhero uh, comic book uh, but transgender superhero comic book okay uh, or transgender theme to it uh, as far as rating goes I give it a so far with two issues and I give it a eight and a half out of ten uh, it's very well done another one I've been reading I have it in my pull list was Captain Kid right and I hadn't I flipped through it the art was a little rough uh, so I didn't read it but i sat down and read that's here i'm not sure yeah. there's a cover of issue number one number two and number three so the story is okay it jumps around it's a little scattered it's written by mark wade and tom pyre the artist is wilfardo torres and brennett uh peoples color kelly Fitzpatrick, a letter, uh, letter, a larger world, I guess as a company. Uh, it started to July 2016. After reading issue number three, I decided to drop it. And I went to the store and like I mentioned, I, you know, I don't drop it until I see it on my pull box again. Uh, so I saw this, you know, I told them to drop it. And I read this one as well. And at the end of this, they say only one issue left. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick up issue number five and read it as well. Um, as far as rating goes, uh, good premise. Poorly executed, I think, in my book anyway. I'm sorry, I usually give a lot of love to the reads that I do, but uh, everything can't be fantastic, right? Uh, as far as rating goes, I would give it... I'd give it a... 4 out of, four out of 10. Another one that I'm reading, that I've mentioned, Brian Azzarello, American Monster. This is issue number three. Issue number four. And issue number five. Okay. And uh, it's written by Brian Azzarello. The artist is Juan Do. Colorist is Juan Do. Letterer is Juan Do. And it started in January 2016. So it's I read, I 
think it's only five issues deep. Hopefully it's only five issues deep, otherwise I buried uh, the rest of them. Uh, if you liked uh, 100 Bullets, loved 100 Bullets, or if you've been meaning to read 100 Bullets, start reading American Monster. It's only five or six issues deep, and it's very reminiscent of 100 Bullets, and it's fantastic storytelling, fantastic storytelling, and the artwork is phenomenal, phenomenal. Wando, phenomenal. 10 out of 10. Easy peasy. Okay. And the last series. The last series that I'm reading. I was way behind on this. And I, I read the first three issues and I knew I was going to read the rest. Uh, Beck, Black Eyed Kids. <laughs> it's a fantastic series to binge read. Okay. It's a horror comic book. This is issue number four. I'll show you the issues. Uh, the writer is Joe, Joe Prout. The artist, the artwork is phenomenal, phenomenal artwork. Artist is Sismon Kudransky. The color is Guy Major and letter is Marshall Dillian. Okay, it started in April 2016. Uh, Insects was another horror comic I was reading horror sci-fi and I dropped out of what I don't think was well executed this was the other one this is incredibly well executed fantastically well executed 10 out of 10 okay. the covers are amazing too amazing artwork it's the same cover artist is um, the regular cover artist is Francesco Francavilla Francisco Frank Cavilla. And this is issue number 10. I hope this continues for a long time. Okay. It has a post apocalyptic feel to it, but it's not the world. It's localized and it's a slow infiltration, I guess, if you want to call it. Uh, fantastic comic. Fantastic comic. Okay. So those are, I guess, the independents. There's a couple, you know, one Marvel, one DC in, in there as well. A few different publishing houses. Uh, that I'm reading. There's some that I'm going to drop, uh, some that I'm looking forward to a lot. I'm going to have a fair bit of reads every month now because I'm liking, loving a lot of comics that I'm reading. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of choices out there. Uh, if you're interested in reading comic books, they range from horror, humor, children's, adult, science, sci fi, fantasy, superhero, love stories, right? Uh, human stories. Right? But fantastic, fantastic medium to be in to be reading comics. Um, so in the next video, what we'll do, we'll take a look at the image comics that I'm reading. And is, there, in, there aren't as many comics as image comics that I'm still picking up or I'm continuing to read, but this is a fair chunk. Um, the Independence basically took up half a short box, a little bit more. The Valiants are taking up, you know, a quarter or more. They're taking up more than the image stuff. So Valiance that I'm reading are taking up more than the image stuff, but image is putting out a lot, so they're about the same. Uh, so what we'll do in the next video, go through the image books, and we've already taken a look at the Valiant books that I'm reading. And there's a couple more that I've actually added to my pull list as well, and we'll take a look at those in the future um, because I haven't started reading them yet. I just looked through the previews, looked at the stories, and some of the artists that are coming up and writers. and. Uh, I'm picking them up and adding them to my pull. Well, keeping an eye out on them for the racks and some that I'm adding to my pull list. Okay. Uh, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.